Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates for January 15th, 2022. Welcome back to the Simple Cyber Defense. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about home networks and how to protect yourself from invaders. Uh, my name is Carl. Hi, this is Ahmad. And we're going to start right now. So we're going to switch over to my virtual machine. Here I have a Windows 10 machine and a Kali Linux machine right here. And we're going to talk about the different things that you could do on your home network. So if you want to get started. Okay, so most of us on our home networks, it's we sign up for internet access with an ISP, an internet service provider. Then we get a nice router at home and that router operates as a router, as a switch, as a firewall, all together built in in one nice package. So you get that, you install it, you suffer a little bit, you call the company and you know trying to help you figure out how to connect it. You're finally connected to the internet. Everybody's happy. Now you got your mobile devices, you got your iPhones, your tablets, your, your Android phones, your laptops, your game consoles, your IoT devices, whether it's Alexa or Google Home or your thermostat, all these devices, they're all connected to your router and your router does a pretty good job connecting each of those devices to the network to the internet okay well you've been doing a good job watching our podcasts and uh, listening to our podcasts and watching our youtube videos and you know how to be secure on your network you know how to secure devices that you're using um you've taught your significant other and your kids how to use their devices and now you get your friend who comes to visit you or your family member that come and visit you and now they want to do you want to join the network? Do you want to be able to access the internet? Do you want to show you download some pictures? Well, any of those devices that is connected to the internet to the, to the network is a door that is open to the rest of your network. So if any one of those devices becomes jeopardized or it gets, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be something hard. You don't need to have a hacker that can, you know, that actually looks at your phone or at your computer to break in. No, it can be something as simple as falling victim to a phishing campaign and clicking on a wrong link or opening a wrong email and that would download some type of a malware to your phone and somebody can reach in through that phone and now they have access to your entire network so what can i do what can i do to protect my network from attacks so even if somebody and we talked about defense in depth before, even if somebody comes in and they take control of one device, that device doesn't infect the rest of the devices on my network. So to do this, there's something called segmentation, right? Or, and one of the things you can do with segmentation is subnetting, which is very easy to follow step-by-step -step, uh, instructions. You can find it all over the web on how to do it. Um, but before you do that, we have to know what a network looks like on our system and carl do you want to show us yeah. you said you have two virtual machines yeah Your two virtual together. machines network together see how that, what that looks like isolate isolated all right so the uh, device that i'm going to do for scanning the network is called the angry ip scanner so what this will do is it will scan your entire network to see anything that's connected to it. So the first thing we'll have to do is open up the command prompt and just yeah, we'll verify. Figure, okay. Yep, right. so we're gonna do IP config. And then this right here is your IP address for your machine. So you want to scan everything from the 10.0.2.0 to 10.0.2.255. That will range the entire network 
for anything that's using IP addresses. So what your router would do is each time a device would connect to it, it'll give it an IP address, kind of like a home address. So it's saying that this 10.0.2.15 is this Windows machine. And 10, maybe 10.0.2.16 could be your cell phone or something else. It all just depends on how it is given up based upon the, uh, the router. So let's try to see if I can make this a little larger for people to see. So once you got your IP address, just verify that the range, so we got 10.0.2.0, which is that right there. And we're going to scan from 0 to .255. And here's the computer name, and then we're going to leave that there, and then we're going to start. So it's going to sit there and it's going to scan every single thing in that network. So it might give you this little warning up here that says that it needs permissions to poke through the firewall, which I'll give to them. So it's still scanning. Okay, so it is done. So it said it scanned from 0 to 255. It scanned 254 different hosts and it found four that are active. So we're going to close that out and see if we can see what's in here. So if you look on these dots here, every time you see a red, that's an inactive device or inactive port and here's the blue is the active ones so here this one is the machine here and these three here are really not known what they are so so something is taking up the 10.0.2.2.3 and dot four IP addresses and it's not telling us what they are so they could be any number of things uh, they could be malicious devices, or they could just be other IoT devices that are connected in. We don't know yet. We have to do a little bit more investigating to see what these IP addresses are used for. So now that we got this knowledge, so we're going to write down... ...these IP addresses so that we can investigate them. So 10.0.2.2, 10 10.0.2.3, 10.0.2.4. Turn make that a little larger so you can see. So these are the three IP addresses that are not known that's being scanned through this IP scanner. And we're gonna see exactly what they are and see if we need to uh, kick them off the network or if they are actually useful for us. So you want to take it from here or you want me to keep going? Uh, no, keep going because you have that on your network. I can give you control. Okay. Um, all right. So now you have all control. Right. So now, now we see here, we have also the uh, dot seven, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see. That's one command again. Mm -hmm. oh, like tiny. Now you did if config. Let's so make that a little larger. Yeah. I can't. I can't. There we go. There we go. All right. So if you look here, right, so see, I have a, a default gateway. What does that mean? So this here, this is my router, right? Gateway is your gateway out to the world, right? It's telling me that I have a subnet mask of big number right here. Anytime you see a 255, 255, 255, know that this is a number that you cannot keep me that. You, you drop these two five fives on top of these, the first three octets, right? 
So I can't change this. This is my network address here, the 10.0.2. I can't change these. So this number here will continue to change as I add or remove devices, right? And this is what we ran here. So now we're able to determine just from our IP config what the 10.2, uh, 10.0.2.2 is. So this is our gateway, right? And we have let's see. 10 .2, 10 0 .2 is the PC. And zero fifteen. Is this the host? Yes, yeah, the host. Or the virtual machine. Okay. So the virtual machine. So we know that there, there are two virtual machines that are running on this network, okay? I know, for example, how do I apply this to what's going on at home? I know that there are two computers, five phones, and three tablets and two cameras. So I already have that. There is a really cool website called draw.io. Um, I'll show it to you here. Draw.io. And what you can do here is you can actually create a diagram of your network. So as you're looking through these, um, as you're looking through, through your net through your network, you can draw this as you go. And here you can search, for example, I want a, a router. Right, so I know there is a router. I search for it and it should come up, populate. So now I have a router here. It's very easy, just drag and drop, right? So I would drag and drop this here. So I know that this is my router and I name it. I gave it that IP address, right? So you can add text and put the IP address and write gateway IP address, et cetera, right? Then you can connect that to, um, to your host machine, right? So I know that there are on this mock network that we're, we're playing with here, there's a host machine that is carrying my two virtual machines. And then there are the two virtual machines. Each one of those will have its own IP address. So how are they connected? So you connect, you can draw lines and connect, um, and connect to the host to your network. And Carl, I'm having a hard time here because of the latency. So I'll, I'll get it. Okay. So let's just do PC, search for PC, and then we got computer, and then two virtual machines. We're going to try. The way the, the way we're running this network is is, is called uh, it's a bridge connection. So each one of our virtual machines and hosts will have their own IP address on the network. Okay, and then I would type I would write down. Okay, this is ten dot zero dot zero dot two dot three and dot four. Right, I was able to identify all of these. Okay, now. What's the next step? Now, on your network, you might have 10 devices, you might have 20, you might have five. I don't know, you'll have to do this on your own, okay? You draw this to kind of give you a, 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 an image of what your network looks like and how everything is connected to one another. Um, let's say I have, a, I have a, a firewall somewhere and it's sitting right here, but like we said, from your ISP, usually the router will do all of that for you. We'll have the network uh, switch, you have the switching and the and firewall and all that. Um, let's say on top of that, you have uh, a wireless access point, you know, so you can attach that and then you attach that to your router. And then to that, you attach your other devices that are that are connected to it. Um, Carl, you want to give us an example of that, what that might look like? Yeah, just one second. So here, uh, this is a the router that we have that I have, 
and you can map out different things on here. Uh, here is the access point and it has 21 clients that are connected to it. And here are different uh, wireless settings that you can have. You can either tell them to hide or show the SSID. The SSID is basically the name of the wireless network that you're having. Um, here you put in your password that you want to create to authenticate the different devices. And in um, In this section here, you would create your guest networks or your segmented different networks to uh, isolate different traffic. So what you would do is you would create your guest network for guests coming in, depending on your different routers. Some have multiple different guest networks, one, some only has one. So what you do is you'd put anything that you don't trust on this network onto this guest network. You can either make it so that it requires a password or you can make it a completely open system. Um, I would recommend putting a password on here so that not anyone can just drive by and just steal your internet even though it won't affect your main network it may affect some web traffic and all that things um there i know with uh xfinity mm -hmm. if you use their their uh their router that they give you it mm -hmm. doesn't give you the option to have a guest network yeah so in, in that case there there are other options um and which why i did here is i actually bought a separate device so that i would have that control right so what i would do is what i did was i took the the an ethernet cable coming out of that uh, cable provider device and i put it into this asus device here to mm -hmm. create my own controllable uh, network so that i can come in here and change all these different to setting so that I would have control over what goes on in my network versus the cable company telling me, okay, I can't do that. Right. So I know not everyone has the capability of doing that, but that is an option. And it's probably the only option if your cable provider or internet provider does not allow you to create these guest networks. Um, I know for this particular model, I got it on off of Amazon for about, I think a hundred dollars so it it's not super expensive but it's not on the cheap side either so um there is another option which you can do this for free but it's, it'll require you to do some work on your end which is if you download the uh, pf sense firewall hmm. um and then you can within the uh and they do have a free version you know the yeah. for home use and within the uh the uh GUI of the uh, uh, of the PFSense when you're setting it when you're setting it up, you can set up different subnets, and each of those subnets will have different controls. Uh, so you can create one for your guests, right? So now even even if you can't create a specific network on your router for guests, just create a subnet um, in your, on your firewall that, and you know, okay, so I'll have maybe. Subnet number one, that will be for my, you know, my work laptop. And 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 for number two, I'll have my phones on there. Network subnet number three, I'll put my video game, you know, consoles on there. Number four, I'll put all my IoT, my IoT devices on there. And then number five, I'll use that as my guest network. Right. So yeah. anytime somebody connects to your network, even if they connect with the same password and they're in that subnet. Right, they won't have access to the rest of your network, and that it, yep. that's a that's a, a free option. Yeah. All right. So now that we've identified these devices, let's see.
one. Let's see, two. All right. And then we went through different options to create the virtualized networks and different settings in a particular router. I mean, each router will have their own capabilities so that you'd have to go through your manufacturer to see what you can do and you can't do. Well, I know um, the most common ones are like what? Linksys, Asus, um, Briggs, and other ones. But you could just basically do a Google search and put in your router's uh, make and model number, and next to it is settings, so that you can then see what capabilities you have. So that see if you have abilities to add a guest network, or if you have capabilities of changing different uh, settings um, if you go through the PDF sense route there's many different do uh, documentation out there and many YouTube YouTube videos out there that will uh, show you step by step on how to do the segmentations and setups and all that there is a, a really nice and detailed post by NetOSEC uh on, on on a secure home network uh we will leave that uh link in the comment step-by-step -step instruction on how to set up your uh pf sense um and again you can also download pf sense for free so. yeah all right so the next thing we'll look into is the kali linux side and we'll do a simple Nmap scan and show you the differences between okay so here we're going to scan the different thing so what we're going to do is Nmap spell it right minus V so basically we're going to do this scan right here on the network we have so dot zero dot two dot zero slash I think it's a slash sixteen not sure uh, twenty four twenty four so it's gonna scan through all that starting with the 10.0.2.0 all the way to 255 so it's done one host is up and scans 7.16 seconds so let's see what nmap found so here the only thing it found was the dot 15 which is the host computer that we're on. All the other ones didn't respond. All right, so this is the, the website that I had mentioned. Um, it's literally step-by-step -step on how to do subnets with PFSense. Uh, if you look here, this is how your typical network at home looks like. You have your router and most of us probably don't even have that switch because all that is built in your router and your wireless access point is built in your router so literally this is your your only layer of defense to the internet if somebody gets in and breaks this layer they have access to the entire network somebody gets through this and they have access to this laptop they can access every other device on the network because why does that work there's something called a private IP and a public IP. IP is is that's your 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 the address that's the number that you have for your home. Nobody has nobody can get, get a hold of you except with that uh, public IP. Well, there's a it, it, there's a finite number of IPs. So if every single device gets an IP address, then there's not enough. There, will, there won't be enough IP addresses left. So what happens? The network here, something cool inside this router here, does something called uh, network address translation. So what does that do? 
is when you get you get one public IP and inside here in the brain of your router, it assigns those private IP addresses like you saw in the demonstration we did with the uh, the uh, virtual machines, the 10.0.2.1 through 255. Those are the private IP addresses. So anything, these numbers here. So if you like, if you remember these three numbers here, they don't change unless you subnet. So when you subnet, then these two numbers here will not change. And then these two numbers will change. Now, all these numbers get translated in the brain of the router here. Okay, and each one of these devices gets that IP address. So how do I protect myself from that type of intrusion? I add another layer. And the way I do that is if I subnet, so let's say I take, if you scroll down here, you will see this one is subnetted. So what does that mean? Here is your router that's coming in from the, the internet. It has your public IP address. Each one of these devices have the private IP address. But now instead of having, um, is, is this an open? No, here it is. Instead of having these three numbers in common, you're only having these two numbers in common and these two numbers change. So now, this will be your, your subnet address. So this can be 10.0.2, and then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, to 255 for the device. Then I have 10.0.3, and then I have 1 or 0 through 255. So, for, so now I have more networks, right? And I have more hosts that I can, that I, I'll ever need to add to my network. And all that was just having one public IP address, right? So if anyone was able to break into one of those subnets for any reason, then all that you can jeopardize is what's on that subnet only. That subnet has no access to the other subnet, okay? So, and this is where we need to be. So now this PFSense uh, uh, setup procedures, that is on this website, it'll show you step-by-step, step, how do I set up subnet number one, number two, number three, number four, five, and six. And now you can have as many devices, up to 256 devices in each one of these subnets. Um, if we scroll down here, here, here are the steps. It's very easy to follow how to create the initial subnets using PFSense firewall. And you can get that from pfsense.org. It's an, it's an open source software. It's, it's used even on an enterprise level. Um, use a software version of it, right? And that's how you subnet your network. It's a CSN's community edition, it is free, all right? Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. So following these simple little steps, you can be one step ahead of any attackers who think that they can just trick an IoT device in or to have someone else do their dirty work for them with the subnettings and, and uh, constant scannings of your network. You'll know exactly who's on there why they're on there and then you can also diagram to keep track of everything um just before we end there is one more little piece that i piece of software that i have uh, so one thing that we didn't really talk about was this uh, universal plug and play it's a a way for people to easily connect to networks either through Xboxes or things like that, but can also be used to also take control of your network. And here I'll give you instructions on how to determine if the uh, universal plug and play is enabled on your network or not. If it's not enabled, you're good. If it is enabled and you don't use it at all, I really suggest that you will 
come here, download this little software to say, okay, it is enabled, and then go through your router's configurations and see if you can disable it. If you have control of your router, you, be, you should be able to disable it. But if you're renting something through your internet provider, you may not be able to. It's highly recommended to turn off universal plug and play. And let's see, and one more little tidbit from this website is something called uh, Shields Up. What it will do is it will scan through your ports on your firewall to see what's open or not. And right now we're going to show you a little quick scan on this network here. So right now it's going to scan through all the different ports and it gives you three different options whether it's open closed or in stealth mode it's done uh, done scanning and you can see there's nothing open on this network which should shouldn't surprise you because it's a virtualized network so everything passed so it's good if you do have some open ports and you don't really use them it's suggested that you go through your firewall settings and close those ports so that it's not another door open for people to connect into your network. So, so I think with that being said, it should wrap it up. And if there's anything else you want to add? No, I think everybody now has a good homework they yeah. can do is go ahead and secure in a network yep and just remember if you enjoyed what you watched and you found it useful to like share and subscribe if you're not a member and we'll see you in the next episode right. Bye. Good one. thanks for listening to the simple cyber defense security updates join us next time when we dive into more security issues and make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode Plus, if you have a topic suggestion or want to support the podcast, stop by our website at simplecyberdefense.com.